Hello everybody and a warm welcome to Barringer on this gloomy Friday afternoon and today I'm going to be talking to you about scratch building and it's going to be divided into two parts and the first part is going to be to, it to be to do with um, an inventory of all the things that I've made on Barringer myself and then part two is going to be um, actually showing you the techniques that I've personally used and what I've used um, and how to put it put things together and those of you who, who've been watching my channel will know that I'm in the process of putting more wood station building together and I'm going to show you that sort of process further progress on that as we go along so you can have a rough idea of how to do it because when I first started having a go at scratch building um, I pretty much was pretty daunted by it um, as is with electrics and I was thinking no oh, I can't possibly make anything like this I'm no good at doing things like that and in the end as you'll probably see a lot of what's on my layer is actually scratch built so without further ado um, we'll get on with the um, scratch building guide So the first building on my list, um, and it won't be just buildings, it'll be all sorts of things, um, infrastructure and things like that. And the first building is to know is this B&Q building which I made. Um, I used to have, those of you who remember far back, used to have B&Q Mark 1. And it's very, very similar to this, except I was never overly happy with it, although I liked the look of it. Um, simply because it seemed a bit too big whereas this is more in keeping with the um, with with the scale of the layout so I rebuilt it and it's like your typical 1980s B&Q and, and I basically referenced it from a photograph that I got off the internet and here there's also if I show you um, there's also a little forklift truck who's working in the warehouse and that's kind of you get if I just reverse the um, the Arctic in it sort of goes into and backs into the delivery area and um, and it was all made by card in fact most of what I've built is in card in fact all of it that I've built is in card and the, the, one of the reasons why I love card so much is because it's so cheap it's so easy to use and if you make a mistake it's not a big deal it's very easy to just rectify it you just do it again it's not a big deal you know materials aren't expensive if you get it wrong so it's a good way of um, trying your hand at scratch building and worst comes to worst you don't like it fine you just throw it away it's not really a big deal it's not, it's not a very big expense um, like I said to you in the past the expense sort of comes with the actual cladding whether you use the plastic card brick paper, uh, brick card, um, brick plastic card that I've used here, or whether you use the um, corrugated um, sheets, which I've used here, which are wheel sheets. Um, that's where the money comes in. This little lip over the door, that's actually made from. It's the same as this corrugated thing, but it's just odds and ends that I've had left over in a box, and I put them together to make a little, a little, um, just, just a little. Uh, Thing on the top don't you, do you see it in the um, in the stores in the 80s um, something else I knocked up is I knocked up this, this bridge um, again it's made out of card it creates a scenic break um, the actual other bits to be involved is um, these are all um, wheels type um, sheets and also this is also a wheels um, girder fencing kit um, the infrastructure itself, like the embankments, that's all scratch built too. That's again made out of card, newspaper, um, and it's things that are relatively cheap and easy to get hold of, so it is worth having a go. And some mod rock on the top. Um, my next building that I've made oh, just not to was Blockbuster Video and Woolworths, and this is basically one building divided into two and this was made out of again card and brick paper 
um, the images were taken off the internet which are readily available um, and again it's a free source you save them onto your desktop create a file just save and say say your layouts images and then you put off, then after you save all these images into this file and then when you're ready to use them you can just resize them crop them whatever and reprint them um, and again these are all stores that I've taken from the 80s um, one of the older buildings that, that I've made is this one here the NCP car park this is one of the more original um, between this one and where we're going next the bus station is the earliest scratch building um, building that I've put together and again it's not nothing too particularly difficult it was some off cuts of hardboard that I had together a bit of doweling that I had left over from odds and odds and ends and basically just sort of knocked it up quickly and um, it wasn't too expensive and again it's brick plastic card um, very readily available very easy to work with because it can be cut using scissors it doesn't make a huge amount of mess um, and yeah it's an effective building although I am looking at possibly rebuilding it um, one of my favorite buildings on the layout is oh, if we go here is the bus station if I look at it from there um, that took a little bit of time to get worked out but the inspiration for it was Winchester bus station it's a very similar kind of style and again it's made out of brick plastic card um, strip wood um, matchsticks um, acetate um, just basic paper um, to make the corrugated um, shutter down at the end so it's nothing terribly terribly difficult and in fact the actual main station uh, bus station building right at the back the back part is literally just scrap built wood that I had in a box and I just knocked it up together to create a frame and then obviously I clad it then in, in the card and, and then after I used the, plas the plastic card on top of that and it's very easy to work with um, on the right is Metcalf building so you can see I mean that's how I got the scale from I used I used that and these Metcalf buildings here on the on the right hand side and the quick note on them is that whenever I'm sure many of you have used Metcalf before and they're great kits to use and you, they always tend to give you loads and loads of spares and I've kept all the spares that I got from them and all these spares get used into making window, the windows and doors and things like that get used into other buildings and one of them is the platform um, platform, um, platform station building which I'll show you soon um, we then have this which is supposedly supposed to be an end of a building which is supposed to kind of blend it in it's, I don't know, it needs weathering I think to kind of tone it down a bit to be truthful with you so that, that's a little job that I can do the actual roof itself the tiles sorry about the shadows um, that was actually from uh, an off sheet um, off, yeah it was just a spare sheet from the plastic uh, from the Metcalf kit that came with it, it came some brick paper came with the Metcalf kit for the building for the townhouses and I basically reused that to create a roof um, one of the few few ready built buildings is as you well know my main station building that's a Hornby one and, that, and that's one of the there's, there's about I don't know about probably half a dozen maybe maybe less than that of actual proper buildings on my layout the majority is scratch built I mean the footbridge is a trying footbridge but I created and scratch built the actual bottom section so the actual legs actually sit into this bottom section then I created the um, the, the stalls to go in it to recess it underneath like you sometimes see in these stations and underground stations it's more of a London thing I think um, this retaining wall again is all scratch built and that is three layers sorry two layers of, plast of, of card and then it's clad in plastic card and then one of the one of the one of the products I'll be showing you when I build um, Morwood Station will be these arches, and they're very effective, and they run all the way along the retaining wall along the back there. It's very simple to use. It's very easy. It really doesn't take very long to 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 do, and you can have a, um, 
create your own. It's not, it's not, and then after you can save yourself a lot of money as well by not um, buying necessarily ready-made retaining walls. Here's another retaining wall that needs that advertising hall that needs to go back up. But again, this is another um, retaining wall that I, I locked up many years ago. So it's like been here for years now. And that's just basically a strip of MDF and that's clad in plastic card and then repainted just to give it a bit of depth. Now one of the, one of those things I wanted to have a look at, actually funnily enough, my EPB and my DMU are in the way slightly. But I wanted to show you the, the platform station building. And um, we'll get onto that shortly actually. So this is the island station building, and my apologies for the abrupt, um, I just quickly decided to get the 416 EPB out of the way, just so I can give you a better view um, of the actual building. Now again, Moorwood Station is going to be built in the exact same manner, in terms of it's going to be made in this brick plastic card, um, with the arches, and the, the, the little ledges there are all made out of, um, they're, just they're just matchsticks, basically. And then it's just, again, um, it's got the posters are all from the internet, um, resized, recropped, downloaded and all the rest of it and printed off and mounted on a bit of card to give it a bit of depth. Um, that's, that little bit there is just um, one of these modernisation packs that you get from Batman and that comes with all sorts of goodies. Um, the, the doors are just like just basically red card basically and um, to, to simulate that it's NSC liveried and I managed to pick up a few more bits I got this little bit from eBay this little dustbin which I really really like I was just trying to get some more but the guy who sells, sells them on eBay don't sell them anymore and again it's just it's all odd and, and you, you can see all the windows they're all Metcalf windows from the Metcalf kits that you get so these are all leftovers to create um, to create these um, these buildings. Now these these little windows on the top that are on the side is to simulate the fact that they're they're, they're the toilet the toilet block. So you get into the toilets from the other side, and basically it's just like a little windows that's on the top just to let the light in. But it's basically the toilet block there. And then after this, obviously some more advertising and all the rest of it. And um, the roof is just a wing mounted roof and it comes straight off. It just sits on, and as you can see. It's just like it's wing mounted and after the various matchsticks that keep it upright and the card and underneath it's clad in the um I think it's woodwork, wood planking um uh, from ratio once again. And just before we leave, um Barrage, I should say that underneath here, which is one of the things I nearly missed out. Was actually there's a there's the underground station platform four and five which is also scratch built, and um, that runs underneath the town scene which you can see in front of you, and it's directly under that bus station there. And I'll take you down. I don't know how well you can see it, but that's it. That is displaying through my webcam currently, um, and basically all of that is scratch built also by card, and it's curved by card and this is one of the good things about using card, it's very very pliable and you can bend it around into certain corners, certain shapes so you can get um, so you can get those curvature and the shapes that you want something that's more difficult to do with say plastic and stuff like that just whilst we're here you've got the signal box cam on the right hand side and this is the new cam at the moment and this one's more with platform 5 um, and you'll see, um, which I'm sure I've shown you already, basically um, more with Platform 5 is also just work in progress at the moment, it isn't anywhere near finished, but because I can't see the front of the train from where I'm standing, I use the webcam directly at the end of the back wall there, which will, I can have a brief look at here and actually see exactly where I'm supposed to stop the train so it doesn't go crashing into the wall or anything like that. And here we are at the signal box and you can see the signal box cam is inside. Um, one of the many other projects that I've had to do, or that I have been working on, is um, I've, had to, I've re rebuilt this. I've built this um, 
road bridge many years ago now those of you know the early day and you know you actually probably seen what it was like underneath and it, all it was is just sections of MDF strip wood and then they just basically screwed and screwed together screwed and glued and then after using the world's um, girder bridge kit to do the top I still haven't actually finished this it's still because I built the extension so that means I had to build the extension to the bridge and then I did the same here by building this extension here and that, this is actually using a different method this was actually downloadable brick paper which I then printed and then covered it covered the card in these in, these, in, in, in the brick paper so let's go up and this is one of my my recent my recent mock-ups of um, scratch building kits which was extremely simple I was really really impressed with this actually because all it was is I, I wanted a, a bridge to link the um, the footpath on the right to the main um, to the main area here in the centre here, and I was wondering how I was going to do it. So I looked through my scrap box of odds and ends to see what I could come up with, and basically this is what I came up with. And again, this is just card, um, card, and more card, and some matchsticks, and some plastic card which I had knocking about that I hadn't used, and I managed to cobble it together and I just basically painted it up and weathered it down and toned it down so it's not as difficult as as, as you think it is to scratch build things like I said I was extremely daunted by, by it I thought I had to buy everything ready built but actually by doing it this way me personally not only does it save me a lot of money but I actually get a lot of enjoyment and pleasure in the fact that this, that this layout has got a lot of things that I've actually personally made and at least if somebody comments on it and says, oh, this is like really pretty or, you know, you've done a good job here, then at least I know that it's, you know, it's something that I've done. And I get a lot of satisfaction from things like that. One of the other few ready-to-plant buildings on this layout is this Hornby Scaledale Saracens. I think it was Saracens Head Pub, but I renamed it the Water Witch. Um, so that's one of the other um, buildings. Like I said, isn't, there isn't that many. When I built the extension, because originally the extension finished here, um, I, I actually added this bit on the outside here, this branch line, so I had to find a way of extending the canal seam. So I created this, again out of card, um, more card, brick paper, and, um, and yeah, I think it's come out really, really well. Um, I used a plate actually to get the curvature that I wanted and then I cut around it and um, that worked out pretty well actually so I'm quite pleased with that still lots of work to do though well the railway is never finished as we move along to here is Moorwood Station um, and again um, a lot to be done but the platforms are all like I said, off cuts of card and wood um, where necessary. It's not a huge amount of money has been spent on it, but hopefully it's effective. That's the retaining wall with some more arch kits. Um, I'm going to get some more this weekend, I think, because I need to do it, finish doing the building for more wood, or I'd, I would like to anyway. And also the arches will also complete some of the arches that are missing as you can see that it finishes here and then from here on in it, it, it goes missing so within that kit will be some of these bigger arches so I can then use those extra arches just to finish these ones off hopefully um, footbridge I've gone over this before so I'll quickly just go over it very briefly um, that's just layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of cards of strips and then just in the every individual layer of card I've just recessed it back a little bit further so it goes back and up to get this kind of level of footbridge and again that did not take very long to do and it's a very quick and easy method and it's also a very very sturdy method as well the base is very sturdy you turn it around it's just like a really solid base so that's really really good um, here at the moment I'm currently experimenting with weathering And um, I'll probably show you better from um, the other side, which I'll do. But I'll, what I'll talk you to, through, so as you can see, if you look down this end, you can't see the webcam. And that's the whole point. 
so you can see the station building but you can't see the webcam and it's supposed to be hidden so if I do do a running shot and it features a train pulling in you can't actually see the webcam because it's hidden by the building that's sticking out here so that's that's kind of one of the clever ways of trying to do it and if I show you the actual webcam itself you can actually see it right there so you can see that this, the building actually comes out slightly and across slightly so it's trying to disguise it as best as best you can and again this is a retaining wall in the making again completely made out of card um, and that will be clad in brick plaster card and then painted and all the rest of it so it'll look a lot of different I mean I had to cut this little hole out because actually this is where the lighting switch goes so that's why I had to do that but if I show you the actual um, weathering that I've been doing um, this is kind of what I've been doing um, what, I, what I did is I don't know what I've, if I'll quickly show you this is what we have which is just a plain sort of grey kind of finish to a platform and I started experimenting and I decided to do maybe if I pull out a bit you can probably see it I've painted it but then I've weathered it and distressed it to make it look worn I don't know what you think I'd be interested in your thoughts to see whether or not you think that's quite a good idea to carry on with doing it because I'm thinking of doing the rest of it in the same way um, I've got a bit of and here you can actually see um, the actual foundations of the platform itself as well you can see how it's made, how it's curved around and how it's glued and pinned in and how it sits and if I get you the actual bit that sits on the top bear with me a second this is it the reason why it's off actually because I've done this one slightly differently this is how it looks but what I did is when I did this this one here um, I didn't varnish it but this one I did but I'm not sure if I prefer it varnished or unfurnished, unvarnished. But I think I actually prefer it the unvarnished way because it seems to look better. Um, but if I just show you how that just kind of sits in there, um, let's see, you can just it just kind of slides in. There you go, and then that just sits in there. There you go, that's where it finishes, and then obviously the flat comes down because so it can't actually because this is lift up section. So that just goes, folds back down. Okay, so moving on to the last sort of area in the main area before I take you over. Um, here I've still got to ballast this and the rest of it, so it's totally unfinished. Here is another bridge I've got to build. And um, the reason why I've got to build it is to conceal these two hinges here so you don't see them. So that's something else I've got to do. And actually, if you can see, this is another retaining wall that I built. And you can see how that's, that's just like a piece of straight card on the back. And then it's basically got a fold cut and it's folded over and it comes out slightly at the bottom. It's narrower at the top than it is at the bottom. But again, I can sort of show you some of the principles as I'm making things tomorrow or whenever it is when I do part two. And then comes the tunnel. So I'll just bear with me a minute and I'll carry on. My apologies for that. Um, it was just because um, the way the memory card is, it sort of records in a certain amount of time. And whenever we finish, you've got to kind of reset it to do another part. So that's why it's I'm sort of having to stop from time to time. Um, so one of the other bits that I've done in the main section that's kind of been scratch built, which is more recent, um, was this which is the whole tunnel area and I've actually enjoyed making this and this was very very easy to make it really wasn't difficult at all and like I showed you in the previous updates I've put some LEDs in there just just free just enough to give it enough of a, of a brightness and glow and all the rest of it so you can see all the way down through and it really is not not that difficult to do and hopefully I'll show you some of these techniques because if it inspires anybody or helps anybody then, that, then that's just fantastic because ultimately I'm, a lot of the reason why I'm doing this is also to do with budget um, and, you know because at the end of the day railway modelling is quite an expensive hobby and, so, and not only do I 
enjoy making it but I like saving money at the same time and so it's a good way of combining the two and also like I said it's great satisfaction to me just to make it anyway so I enjoy it very much I'm going to take you over to new shop to show you the last section before we wrap it up for the inventory so here we are offered on the hill um, there isn't much in the way I guess the scratch building is to do with the actual pond itself the embankment but again that's odds and ends and the board really um, it's just the usual way of mod rocking and things like that it's nothing too exciting um, a couple of last bits of, of infrastructure that that is actually um, ready planted or ready to build or whatever just straight out of the box is offered on the hill station building itself and also this um, kindly donated um, signal box um, which really looks the part here and also I have a little waiting room down there down that end but we'll just quickly show you the last bit that I've made and that is this china clay works that I did um, again I think I mentioned this before um, it's just made out of card again um, dowling talcum powder a bit of mod rock and those things in themselves aren't necessarily expense, expensive it's just like the dressing like, like the bricks like the corrugated roof so you know you don't have to spend money on that until you're happy with the actual design the actual design itself can be made quite cost effectively it's when you're trying to add the details that's when the money starts racking up so that is the last bit of scratch building on uh, Barrager for now I should say because I'm sure there'll be plenty more and um, what I would say is just don't be daunted by it just have a go I mean especially like if, you, if you've never done it before you know card's such a great medium to use that it's so easy to use that if you get it wrong it's not a big deal so it's worth having a go see if you like it and then hopefully it'll give you the confidence to do some more so thanks for watching uh, feel free to comment and subscribe and I will speak to you all soon so bye for now